Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about one of the pillars of AWS Well Architected Framework and we have discussed in some other video about AWS Well Architected Framework. So AWS Well Architected Framework actually helps cloud architects build a secure, high performing, resilient and efficient infrastructure for a variety of applications and workloads. And workload like what is workload? So we need cloud architect for workload. So workload actually is a collection of resources and code that delivers business value. In simple, we can say any marketing website, for example, that can be workload or maybe backends for a mobile app that can also be a workload or maybe analytic platforms. They all are workload. And now to design those workloads, these cloud architects need some uh, guidelines and those guidelines are given by this uh, AWS Well Architected Framework and this framework actually provides a set of questions and design principles across six pillars and we are discussing one of the pillars that is performance efficiency. Now the performance efficiency pillars on the ability to use computing resources efficiently to meet system requirements. So we have the resources, but we, we want to use them efficiently. And for them, we need or for that purpose, we need guidelines and those are given in this one. And we also want to maintain the efficiency as demand changes and te technologies evolve. Because sometimes let's say number of users increasing in that case also, we want to keep that our system should be giving efficient performance to our customers. There are five design principles for performance efficiency in the cloud. First one is democratize advanced technologies. Second is go global in minutes and use serverless architecture. Experiment more often. Consider mechanical sympathy. So now these all design principles you can see from the headings that they will be helping us to achieve performance efficiency for our let's say website for our workload in general. Now first, democratize uh, advanced technology means, it says that rather than asking your IT team to learn about hosting and running a new technologies, consider consuming a technology as a service. So it says that you ha already have a service given by some service provider, then why not you use it? For example, NoSQL databases, media transcoding, and machine learning are all technologies that require specialized ex expertise. And in the cloud, these technologies become services that your team can consume, allowing your team to focus on product development rather than resource provisioning and management. You can see, say that instead of wasting time to like to reinvent the wheel and you do all the things by yourself, it's good to get all these things as a service which are provided by let's say any, any like Amazon Web Services. And I have taken all these things from their white paper. I'll be sharing the link in the description section as well. You can go through all the details. So everything I'm presenting here, they are from AWS. Second design principle is go global in minutes. How we can go global in minutes? It means we can deploy our website. Let's say we can deploy our workload in multiple AWS regions. And we have discussed all these regions and availability zones in other video. So we should apply, uh, we should upload or deploy our uh, services in multiple regions so that users in different regions can have lower latency and they can enjoy better experience at minimum cost. For example, you can uh, um, use availability zones, let's say in India, second availability zones, let's say in Australia. And the third design principle is use serverless architectures. So serverless architectures, by definition, actually they remove the need for you to run and maintain physical servers for traditional computing activities. It means they are removing the need for those all physical servers. And for instance, serverless storage service can act as a static website. So if you need some static website, then why, why to purchase all these servers and these things? So the event uh, and event services can host code and this removes the operational burden of managing physical server and can lower transactional cost because managed services operate at cloud scale. So there are advantages, there are multiple 
management issues maintenance issues they are handled by cloud services provider and just you have to focus on some other important stuff fourth design principle is experiment more often so provide prof uh, performance efficiency we should experimenting more often so you can carry out comparative testing using different type of instances so we are using different instances different storage different configurations to compare and with virtual and automatable resources and this will actually help us at what to select and what what i mean what to choose the fifth design principle is consider mechanical sympathy here you can say that uh, always use technology approach that aligns best with your workload goals now let's say here you have a workload let's say consider data access pattern when you select database or storage approach so it says that if you have some website let's say maybe e-commerce website then look at the data access pattern on that website uh, or maybe on, on maybe access to database and on the basis of that you can select you can make decision that which database or storage you need to select There are four best practice areas for performance efficiency in the cloud. So best practice areas will have some foundational questions and question we can have some context and some best practices which you can find for the detail. I mean, you can find a, a document link in the description section where you can find for the details. But in general, these are the best practice areas, selection, review, monitoring, trade-off. Now, their focus is to gather data on all aspects of the architecture, uh, architecture from the high level design to the selection and configuration of resource type. And we need this. We want to review our choices to take advantage of continually evolving AWS cloud. It means we review, monitor, and then select. So in this way, we want to select something which is, which is in benefit or which helps us to achieve performance efficiency and we can make trade-offs in our architecture to improve performance such as using compression caching and or relaxing uh, consistency requirement so the first best practice areas has these foundational question which will help us to achieve performance efficiency the so question is how do you select the best performing architecture this question and yes to address, our for, to address such kind of question, we need some best practices and those best practices are given in the document. I'm not going further in detail, but you can see, uh, you can realize some of the importance of these questions. That second one is how do you select your compute solution? How do you select your storage solution? How do you select your database solution? How do you configure your networking solution? So you see, selection is key component in, in let's say, deployment of some uh, cloud application second one is review how do you evolve your workload to take advantage of new releases so we should be keep, keep, keep updating as we should be keep taking advantage of new releases monitoring how do you monitor your resources to ensure they are performing so if you have some resources you are using the cloud we should keep monitoring them trade-off how do you trade off to improve performance? So on the basis of that monitoring, maybe we need to make some trade off, but how do you use trade off to improve performance? These are some foundational questions. And uh, I think that's the last slide regarding performance efficiency pillar of AWS well-architected framework. And we have we gone through uh, some of the design principles and some basic things and best practice areas and some of the foundational questions, but this is not all uh, which we need to learn. Maybe you can go through the document uh, whose description there in the description section, sorry. And you can go further in detail there. And thank you, thank you very much for your time. Hope to see you in, in my next video, which will be on the next pillar of AWS well-architected framework. Thank you.